On February 27, 2020, President's Day, the World Mental Health Coalition, led by Bandy Lee, held a meeting in New York City. They noted how the failure to conceive the Trump problem as one of mental health had resulted in the political failure to impeach and how our understanding of oppression and warfare was failing to account for the psychological weaponry being employed. So they put forward a tool for citizens groups to correctly identify and target the problem, the first declaration of freedom of mind in history. The world will remember that day. The, the declaration opens up unprecedented ways to protect the mind including by submitting the declaration to the United Nations. More than a tool, we now have a template and a blueprint that can act as the basis for an international agreement guaranteeing the most fundamental of all freedoms. The declaration responds to the authoritarian takeover and public health emergency that marked the Trump presidency and breaks new ground with its protections. It specifies and outlaws all the main variants of mind control. It defines and prohibits the phenomenon of mental slavery, as well as specifying a psychological right to individuate. And with respect to today's theme of presidential fitness and the duty to warn, the declaration creates an unqualified prohibition of censoring speech, media, and experts in relation to mental health issues, together with an unqualified right of the public to fully access information and expertise. By definition, an unqualified prohibition or right permits no exemptions. Current human rights law, by contrast, permits restricting freedom of speech in times of, of emergency, despite it being emergencies which most strongly call for the public intervention of experts. The hallmark of authoritarianism is an imbalance and abuse of power within a human relationship, the blind submission to authority and the suppression of one's free will. Authoritarianism begins at home and endures in our schools, workplaces, and institutions. Before it becomes a political or social problem, it is first a psychological disorder affecting and afflicting individuals. This disorder afflicts both ruled and ruler, victim and victimizer, or predator and prey, to quote Trump himself. This is the dividing line, not traditional left or right, but authoritarian or democratic, anti or pro-social, pathologically disordered or not. Authoritarianism is part of the human condition, but it needn't always be. We have the tools to push back with human rights at the centerpiece of this endeavor. Protecting freedom of mind is as much education as it is law. The public need to learn to defend this freedom against those who would violate it. By learning to form and articulate their own opinions and challenge those of others, people, not, people can overcome their submissive attitudes. Ira Shalev's models of courageous fellowship and intelligent disobedience are the building block to this democratic revolution. In short, think, blink, choose, and sometimes just say no. Lest we underestimate the ramifications of this undertaking, this entails a fundamental reordering of how human societies function. It will dismantle the last vestiges of authoritarianism in our cultures and will help to build a peace that humankind has never seen. When one pushes the envelope, the world is never prepared. Proponents of freedom of mind face extensive and wide-ranging opposition. Freedom of mind is not simply irrelevant to the powerful, it is an impediment to their modus operandi. Much of the academic middle remain perplexed by the rise of elected authoritarians, or even right away mind control is a cult problem that afflicts the fringes of society. Proposals to update the law to reflect advances in the science of social influence have met resistance from legal traditionalists. And in the domain of human rights, a rights violation is still narrowly conceived as involving situations where the violator is a governmental actor. We stand well and truly on the precipice. The spread of democracy is halted and even reversed as dangerous leaders take charge of entire countries. Destructive mind control techniques have spread from the cultic fringes of society into the mainstream. The cult leader's playbook has gone mainstream is not yet a truism, but it soon will be. But there is no despair without hope. An emerging body of mind protective law continues to develop and expand at the national level. We are living through a golden age of cult awareness. The word narcissist has well and truly entered the lexicon. Hundreds of thousands of families from Hong Kong, Turkey, and Russia have embarked upon a new life in the free world, determined to protect and nurture their young children's minds. During recent mass protests in China, protesters, protesters identified and skillfully pushed back against the mind control of the Chinese Communist Party.
As this psychological awakening slowly extends across the world, it shows us that humanity is not too thin a community to base a universal right to be mentally free. It is the widest community we have. And that is why freedom of mind is so important. Thank you.